Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we'll learn to adjust acceleration and deceleration times and profiles on the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch both the ramping events for motor drives and adjusting volts per hertz profiles on the 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, since we'll be dealing with this particular manufacturer's parameter programming process and navigation within this motor drive's decision tree, it may help to download the associated datasheet and or user manual. Before making use of the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive, let's ensure we're at the same start state by initializing the drive to a default state, clearing any errors, and programming the drive to recognize both the motor and the external speed potentiometer. We'll initialize the drive to a default state and clear any errors using the initialization and protection parameter B084. Then we'll program it to recognize a 200 watt motor with a nominal rotational speed of 1800 RPM using the motor settings parameters H003 and H004. Finally, we'll program the drive to recognize an external speed potentiometer input using extended function parameter A001. This start state establishes a 60 Hz base frequency, a 60 Hz maximum frequency, forward default rotation, a linear volts per hertz ratio, a 10 second linear acceleration time, and a 10 second linear deceleration time, among other properties. This motor drive is now ready for today's activities. In this application exercise, we'll learn to adjust acceleration and deceleration times and profiles and examine their influence. To keep our comparison on a level playing field, all iterations will use a linear volts per hertz profile. Only acceleration, deceleration time and profiles will change. The Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive has available two acceleration and deceleration profiles, linear and S-shaped. The default profile for both acceleration and deceleration are linear with a default value of 10 seconds. For an unloaded motor, this default acceleration and deceleration profile and time is evident, but rather undramatic. When an operator presses run when the external speed potentiometer knob is pegged fully clockwise, the motor drive linearly increases applied frequency to 60 Hz over a period of 10 seconds. The motor accelerates and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor drive linearly decreases applied frequency to 0 Hz over a period of 10 seconds. The motor decelerates and turns off. Like I said, evident but undramatic. For this reason, we're going to step up our game a bit by attaching a heavy flywheel to our motor. The flywheel will serve as an inertial resistance to both accelerate from rest and, once moving, decelerate to a stop. The flywheel includes a high contrast visual indicator to assist the viewer and recognize the influence of different ramp times and patterns. But I must admit, this isn't nearly as helpful nor as informative as I'd hoped, since the differences are pretty subtle and the screen refresh rate kind of hides these subtleties. My hope is that the dissimilarities are more apparent when the different iterations are compared with one another. Our first iteration is a linear acceleration pattern with a 10 second ramp up time and a linear deceleration time of 0.1 seconds. This extremely short deceleration period is essentially equivalent to instantaneously disconnecting the motor from supply voltage and letting it free spin to a halt. You'll note letting a flywheel of this mass free spin to a halt takes an appreciable amount of time, 5 minutes and 48 seconds to be exact. No, we will not wait the whole time for it to come to rest but rather move through this experiment rather quickly, taking a look at only the influence of acceleration times and patterns. Before we bring this lecture to a close, however, we'll come back and examine deceleration events with heavy inertial loads. First, let's navigate to parameters F002, acceleration time, and F003, deceleration time. Parameter F002, acceleration time's default value is 10 seconds. Let's leave it at 10 seconds. Navigate to parameter F003, deceleration time, and decrement it to the minimum setting of 0.1 seconds. Press enter to save the value. With parameter D001, output frequency monitor being displayed, when an operator presses run when the external speed potentiometer is pegged fully clockwise, the motor drive linearly increases applied frequency to 60 Hz over a period of 10 seconds. The motor and flywheel accelerate and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor drive almost instantaneously drops excitation frequency to 0 Hz. 
the motor and flywheel free spin to a halt just under six minutes later. Note that if the operator presses run when the external speed potentiometer knob is halfway, the motor drive linearly increases applied frequency to only 30 Hz over a period of only five seconds, as one might expect. The linear acceleration time assumes a zero Hz start and ends at the base frequency of 60 Hz. 30 Hz being halfway between zero and 60 takes only half the time to get there. Our second iteration also uses a linear acceleration pattern, only this time with a five second ramp up time. The acceleration time remains at 0.1 seconds. Navigate to parameter F002, acceleration time, and decrement it to five seconds. Press enter to save the value. With parameter D001, output frequency monitor being displayed, when an operator presses run, when the external speed potentiometer knob is pegged fully clockwise, the motor drive linearly increases applied frequency to 60 Hz over a period of only five seconds. The motor and flywheel accelerate and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor drive almost instantaneously drops excitation frequency to zero Hz. The motor and flywheel free spin to a halt just under six minutes later. It may help to compare the two iterations to recognize the subtle differences between them. The linear 10 second ramp up time takes 10 seconds to linearly increase excitation frequency to 60 Hz. Whereas the linear 5 second ramp up time takes only 5 seconds to linearly increase excitation frequency to 60 Hz. As a result, for the iteration with a smaller ramp up time, the motor and flywheel accelerate quicker and come up to speed faster. Here they are together. It makes sense. Our third iteration makes use of an S-shaped acceleration pattern with a 10 second ramp up time. Deceleration time remains at 0.1 seconds. First, we need to change the acceleration pattern. Navigate to basic function parameter F002, acceleration time, and increment it back up to 10 seconds. Press enter to save the value. Navigate to extended function parameter A097, acceleration pattern selection, and increment it to 01. S-shaped curve. Press enter to save this value. With parameter D001, output frequency monitor being displayed, when an operator presses run, the motor drive starts slow, then blows through a pretty wide range of frequencies and kind of backs off the steam when it gets close to the base frequency over a period of 10 seconds. The motor and flywheel undergo a characteristic S-shaped acceleration and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor drive almost instantaneously drops excitation frequency to zero hertz. The motor and flywheel free spin to a halt just under six minutes later. It may help to compare the S-shaped 10 second acceleration with that of our initial linear 10 second acceleration to recognize the subtle differences between them. The linear 10 second ramp up takes 10 seconds to linearly increase excitation frequency to 60 hertz. whereas the S-shaped 10 second ramp up starts off slow and blows through a ride range and backs off over the same 10 second period. As a result, for the iteration with the S-shaped curve, the motor and flywheel undergo an acceleration pattern similar to that experienced in an elevator traveling between floors. Here they are together. What remains on exam at this point is deceleration. The reason I delayed this discussion is because a certain amount of baggage comes associated with it, namely asynchronous generation. You recall from way back in the mechanical power torque and rotational speed lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel that the rotor with squirrel cage induction motor must necessarily lag the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator for the induction process to work at all. If however some external outside force, let's say expanding steam, falling water, moving wind, or in this case a heavy flywheel that established rotational inertia was capable of turning the rotor faster than the synchronous speed established by the stator, we've effectively turned this motor into a generator. When you get right down to it, that's what the deceleration process is doing. By decreasing excitation frequency, it's slowing the synchronous speed produced by the stator such that counter torque or braking action of a generator actively slows the rotor. 
The problem is there's limits to the amount of energy a motor drive can absorb or dissipate without resorting to accessory components. An especially abrupt deceleration period for a load with an especially large established inertia like this flywheel can easily cause the backfed electrical energy to rise to dangerous levels. Let's see what happens when we try to decelerate this load. First, let's return the drive to the default state, notably a linear 10 second acceleration ramp up time and a linear 10 second deceleration ramp down time, with parameter D001, output frequency monitor, being displayed. When an operator presses run, the motor drive linearly increases applied frequency to 60 Hz over a period of 10 seconds. The motor and flywheel accelerate and speed stabilizes as previously. When an operator presses stop, the motor drive starts decreasing excitation frequency, but rather quickly faults out. The motor drive instantly depowers and the motor and flywheel free spin to a halt just under 6 minutes later. Note the alarm LED is lit and the data display is displaying error code E07. When we look up error code E07 in the user's manual, we find it to be an over voltage alarm, as we'd expect. After the load comes to a halt, a technician can reset the motor drive by pressing stop reset. As further evidence of what's going on during this over voltage event during deceleration, let's monitor the DC link value during the deceleration process. Navigate to monitor function D102, DC voltage monitor, and press mode to display the value. At rest, the DC link is just shy of 300 volts. When accelerating, the DC link briefly dips and stabilizes when the motor reaches full speed. During deceleration, the DC link spikes and errors out at greater than 380-ish volts. Really the only solution to a motor drive experiencing over voltage event during deceleration is to resort to other more exotic braking methods necessitating accessory components, or much more simply, allowing more time to decelerate the load with established rotational inertia. After some trial and error, I've increased the deceleration time to 13 seconds. With parameter D102, DC voltage monitor being displayed, the DC link at rest is just shy of 300 volts. When accelerating, the DC link briefly dips, then stabilizes when the motor reaches full speed. During deceleration, the DC link spikes, reaching just shy of 400 volts before returning to a stable at rest value. Any higher, and it would have triggered an over voltage alarm as previously. Notably, the heavy flywheel decelerates to a speed I can stop with my finger in only 13 seconds whereas previously I had enough established inertia to rotate for just shy of six minutes. Six minutes of waiting just got reduced to 13 seconds. I would be a happy man if my every whim was granted with this level of expediency. All right, that's about it for this short applications exercise. In conclusion, we learned to change acceleration and deceleration times and profiles on the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive and observe their results. Additionally, we learned to recover the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive from an over voltage event during deceleration and increase deceleration time to accommodate for loads with large rotational inertia. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive at home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.